Hi everyone, Claudia here from Lighting Clarity. I wanted to talk about the different cues that Spirit brings in to assist you at different times of your lives uh, and being aware of those cues when they come in. All of you would be quite self-aware, not all the time, but mostly self-aware or you wouldn't be attracted to, to listening to me um, on Facebook, on YouTube, um, on where it is that I post. You wouldn't be attracted to my videos, you wouldn't be attracted to my energy if you yourselves were not quite self-aware. So throughout my life, um, they have brought many cues in spirit when I have asked for assistance. One of those cues, I'm going to share a couple of stories that might help you. When you ask for assistance, and you give them what it is that you're needing, your holy teams, you're asking God, you're asking for signs. It's always good not to ask for a particular sign, but just saying, I really need some confirmation that this is the right thing. So many years ago, I lived in Perth and I was looking to put my my little boy, my younger one, my youngest, I uh, have two boys, uh, the younger one, into daycare and he was three. And I went to about three daycares. And before I started looking at the three daycares, I said to Spirit, can you please indicate which daycare to go with? Because I've never done daycare before. And I was wanting to put him in a couple of days a week. Um, going off to work, doing the rest, you know, doing readings for people and all the rest that I was doing. And I went into two daycares and I, I liked what they had to say, one of them. The other one I wasn't too, too excited about. And, you know, I think, okay, I, I can think about this second one that I've seen, but there's a third one I'm going to go and see. And I still hadn't had my cues with the other two that I'd seen. There was one that was better than the other one, and I liked them. When I went into my third one, as soon as I walked in, there was a statue, a statue of an angel sitting right there on their front desk, or actually in the doorway on a pot plant, sitting in a pot plant. And our front desk is here and it was on the pot plant now, I remember it. And it was Archangel Raphael. And I went, brilliant, this is going to be the place. Then I walked and I introduced myself at the front desk and they took me around on the tour. And besides seeing Archangel Raphael there, I really loved the place. I loved how they spoke, how they interacted with the children. I watched, and being a psychic and clairvoyant, I'm reading into the vibration of the place. I'm also reading into the people that are there as well. And I knew this was the place for my younger boy. And he loved it. He was there for a year before he started um, kinder, which was three, di three, di three days a week. So I didn't need daycare at that point. I was able to work those during those hours. So that was a cue that they gave me externally. Another cue that I was given was I was asked by spirit, well, I asked Spirit what was hindering me. This was about 10 years ago. I said, what's been hindering me? What's been blocking me? Because I could feel something was blocking me uh, to do with my work, to do with even my abilities to a point. And they brought me to a situation that I'd had with someone, a family member. And, they, and I said, oh, right. And normally I'm the sort of person that I would talk things out with people. I don't hold... Um, everything inside. I picked my battles wisely as you do, um, pretty patient, but I knew I needed to say something to this person. So I said to them, you know, how will it turn out with me saying my speaking my truth? And they said they'll be hurt and they'll be sad. And I said, right, but I said to them, well, it's something I actually really need to do and I already know this. And they supported me on it. And I went over and I had that chat with a family member who indeed reacted as they did and there was no um, surprises from me and that was fine. I wasn't there for an apology. I was there just to express what had occurred and it occurred years earlier and that you know I was aware that this had occurred and I was aware of what they had done. I'm not going into it. And you know I left um, feeling lighter within but definitely having had locked horns yeah, in that conversation. I went home happier though, even though, and I sat on the couch and I said, it was during the day, and I said to them, you know, I've had that conversation, I feel better for it, but this is a family member I need to interact with. 
at quite intimately. So I really need you to resolve this. I really need your help in smoothing out the relationship between us now in bringing healing in. As soon as I'd said that, in the corner of the room, when I looked up, there was a massive pink orb, really bright and strong, the size of the moon. I was really shocked to see it. And I knew instantly it was Archangel Shemuel. And Archangel Shemuel is the Archangel of love and relationships. She had come in to tell me, we'll smooth this out. Now, this was a family member that wouldn't let things go easily. They never won. To allow themselves to be stood over, told off, they're never wrong. Yeah, in their head, they're never wrong. And I was still expecting some sort of retaliation from them. Well, blow me down, they said nothing. They never addressed it. They let it go completely. And I knew that spirit had sorted that out. I knew they were going to sort it out before I saw them. I saw them a couple of weeks later. And they said nothing upon the conversation we had had or the argument we had had. It was a conversation and an argument, we'll put it that way. It was a bit of both. And I was delightfully happy that Spirit had held up their side, that they would assist me, especially seeing that big pink orb and Shamuel being there. I could feel her presence and I heard her with what she was saying to me. Um, being clairvoyant, being psychic, I, I have that ability to do that. But all of you have that ability too, to feel into and listen to the energy when you've said a prayer to God or when you've asked your holy teams for help. Ask for them to answer you. Listen into the energy. Even if you close your eyes or you focus with your eyes open on the curtain on one particular thing, ask your question and listen for the answer to come in. Sometimes it's good to have your eyes open and just focus on a particular thing, whether it's a candle, whether it's the curtains, whether it's a spot on the floor, and listen in for, their, for the energy of what it is they're saying to you. Feel into it. Clear. Often when we receive messages from spirit, it's clear sentiently. It's through feeling. Sometimes it's clear audiently, um, depending. My gifts are everything. Clear sentence, clear audience, clear cognizance, clear voice. I'm everything, but everyone's got a stronger, um, my stronger one is clear sentient, but other times it swaps to clear audience, and, and often it's a combination of all of them when I'm doing a reading for someone, but when it's myself doing it for me, there's different clears that work more strongly. So I'm doing a reading for all of you, it's all the clears that work. I don't really pay attention to what clears are working, it's just, I just give the information, we just assist the client, I uh, use as a channel for spirit. So. There are different cues that spirit will bring in um, into your life when you've asked for assistance and even when you haven't, you're thinking, how am I going to resolve this? And, and you're looking for an outside resource for help. Uh, they're just saying to me as I sit here that they do communicate on the outer edges to help within boundaries. They cannot overstep our free will. They would never do that. If you do ask for help directly, your, your help, the help you receive is more direct and more swift. So you can say, could you leave me to resources that's going to help me with resolving the computer problem I've got, or leave me to a, a, a tradesman that's going, or a tradie that's going to be able to help me, could be a woman, so tradie will call them, can be able to help me with the particular problem I've got at home. They will bring them in. I've always worked on faith in God, and I've always also listen to myself, listen to my higher self, listen to um, listen to my higher self, and I've listened to my teams as well. You will find your spirit guides are very good advisors. Uh, they've all lived earthly lives. They're very good advisors. They're very practical in their advice. You've heard me say that time and time again. Also, the archangels are very good at bringing in healing, and the ascended masters are good for bringing in the energy of wisdom. And they're very good at weighing up the pros and cons. So these are just some of the stories I wanted to give you. I'm just seeing if there's anything up. Okay, so when I was a very little girl, I remember being about two and a half, three, I was able to hear spirit very closely, very easily. It was my spirit guides that I was able to hear very, very well. And they came to a point where they said to me, and I had a brother that was six years older, so we are watching, you know, all the, the television shows that were on, you know, I was influenced by him. But 
they said to me, there's going to come a point where you won't be able to hear us so much. You won't be able to hear us, is what they said. I got very, very upset. And I called my mother out and I said to her, and she didn't understand what I was talking about. She didn't know she had a daughter that was clairvoyant. It came down her family line, the ability um, that I had. But she didn't realise that I was clairvoyant. She herself didn't identify as that. She just knew she could tell what everyone was thinking <laughs> and what was going to come in. But she didn't clarify herself as that, didn't classify herself as that. Um, so I became very upset that I couldn't hear my spirit, that that was going to occur. And they were saying to me, you're growing up. And I understand what they meant. I was being influenced by other things. Now, throughout my life, I always had the ability. Um, and the ability really came in in my late 30s, mid to late 30s, because I was ready to start doing this for a living. And I had been preparing for that. All my life, all I've done is a lot of self-growth. Self-growth has been a massive, massive chapter of my life. And I do that with my clients. We came here to grow. It's very good to have the next prediction. You know, we're going on a holiday and buying a new house and having a new car and the new man is coming in and or new lady or, or whatever. It's all good to have that. But we came here to grow. That's why you chose to come. You chose to come to grow. You chose Earth. And as I've said before, Earth is one of the most turbulent dimensions to incarnate on. And you didn't choose it lightly because you knew coming here was going to award you the furthest growth the fastest than any other realm could possibly give you because earth is one of the most turbulent and as i said before when we go home to the heavens your growth doesn't stop because you've left earth or the realm that you incarnated on and you've passed away and you've gone up to the heavens your growth continues on in the heavens there are many classes you can attend I see within my clients when I'm working with them that they work often with Master Merlin and they often also work with um, other masters as well in the heavens and they sit in the Archangelic Realms classes as well where they sit with certain Archangels. We have the ability of choice in the heavens. We also have the ability of choice as to who we mix with in the heavens. There are different realms of heaven. God is very multidimensional. Heaven is very multi-dimensional. And as I've said before, we like everything to be in a neat package because on earth we like everything to be in a neat package so we feel safe, so everything makes sense. Heaven doesn't make sense when we go home. It just doesn't because we're used to it being a particular way. We thought it was going to be the way we read in the Bible we follow or in the religious texts we follow. We get up there and we think, okay, it is partly, but it's actually far bigger than that. And as I've always said to people, Jesus is not, the Bible doesn't do Jesus justice. Jesus is far bigger than that. And he said far more than what they were willing to write or even could comprehend. And there are many, many um, prophets that came that were important as well. Jesus is one of the strongest masters that I know, one of the strongest healers. I will say that 100%. And... Um, I often hold conversations with Jesus as well. There are many cues that spirit will bring in. Ask for the help you need. Ask God for the help you need. And I've, I've spoken about myself when, you know, I was really um, on my knees when I was about early 20s. And I said to God, I need you to bring help in. And I want it in straight away. I'd had a reading with someone. I didn't like what she had to say. I needed to change my timeline quickly. And I said to God, this isn't going to happen again. I don't want this to happen. You're going to help me change this right now. And I meant it. And I mean this, I said to God. And five days later, I got a flyer in, the, uh, in my letterbox. Not an email, a flyer back in those days. And emails as well. But <laughs> and it's, uh, there was a counsellor that... Um, had opened up, was doing private counselling at her home now. I had met her before where I was going to a self-help centre and she was one of the facilitators there and she had decided she was going to provide a professional service of counselling. I knew I held my answer. God had answered me very fast. Very, very fast. As I sit here, I see some people have got like fog over the eyes, blinkers over the eyes, because some of you would say to me, but Claudia, I've said that, I've asked for that. 
and I'm just seeing some fog over the eyes. Ask for the fog to be removed. Ask for the clarity to come in. Ask for what help you need in order for the clarity to come in so then you can look down your life path. So then you can make decisions in an informed manner. And be bold. Ask for direct help with what you need. Don't hold back. I need progress in this area. I need assistance here. I remember asking for assistance to do with my website. Like that. And I'd been looking for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then finally I just said, okay, God, holy team, can you help me with finding the right website lady? Like that, she popped up out of nowhere on the internet. And I went, oh, there she is. That's the one I need. And I just knew it. She was going to do it. I looked at everyone else and no, no, no. I just was like getting nowhere. I just laughed. I said, thank you. There are many cues that spirit brings in. Many, many cues. See if there's anything else. There's some of the stories I wanted to give you. I've written lots of different things down. No, I think that's it. I think that's it. Many, many blessings. I'll connect with all of you again soon. Thanks, everybody.